The ISAF Sailing World Cup continues at Sail Melbourne and capturing all the action as it unfolds and demonstrating the latest in world-class tracking technology is New Zealand company Virtual Eye. You know, the whole idea was to take um, the XY coordinates from a boat, turn them into pictures and, and then create real-time live animations that could be put into live TV. I mean, we do it in Formula One, we do it in cricket, we do it in golf, but I think sailing is the perfect sport for this. So it's really great now to take that technology and help explain yet again, you know, what's going on in the sport, add it to TV pictures, so at least people can tell who's in front. The reason we've got them here is because uh, sailing's uh, it's not an easy sport to, to actually get a big picture and it gives us uh, the ability to uh, bring this support to a lot more people. Virtualize is all about bringing a new dimension, if you like, to, to sailing. So we take tracking equipment, which is attached to the competitors' yachts. They go out onto the race course their positional information, where they are on the sea, along with all the, the marks on the course, the committee boat, etc., are brought back to us here, where they're provided to the virtualised system and turned into graphics, which is then fed to the broadcast and the internet. We try to make it look as realistic as possible, so there is a sea, there's waves, there's white caps. Um, when the boats go through the water, you see the splash from the bow. You can see before the sailors do quite often who's made the right and the wrong decision. Yeah, they're very, very impressive. It really is um, cutting edge uh, technology. Day four of Sail Melbourne was a challenge for officials and competitors. With persistent rain and a variable wind clocking its way around the compass, the only Olympic class fleet to succeed in completing a race was the 49ers. After nailing a clean start, the New Zealand team of Burling and Tuki led at the first wind mark, ahead of the Australian skipper Outridge with stand-in crew Irishman Matt McGovern. Unable to catch the Kiwis on port, Outridge jibed early, hunting down more pressure on the western side of the course. Clocking speeds of around 10 knots versus the Kiwis' 8 knots, the lead changed halfway down the course. And by the leeward mark, the Australian had turned a 5-second deficit to a 20-second lead. With clean winds out front, Outridge and McGovern went on to win the race and secure the overall lead with 14 points over the Kiwis' 16 points. The Phillips brothers from Australia not far behind in third on 22 points. A familiar face to sail Melbourne is Australian Crystal Weir. Usually as part of the women's laser radio class, Crystal is competing as part of the RSX fleet this year. I just wanted a change, I wanted to do something new and different and um, give myself a real challenge. Fitness element is, is huge in that class. Yeah, to make decisions when your heart rate's at 190 is really difficult, so yeah, it's been tough but, but really rewarding. Expanding her skill set, Crystal has taken on a modelling role to support one of the social events at Sale Melbourne. So today there's, there's a fashion parade going on for ovarian cancer and it's Ladies Day, so yeah, I'll be doing a little bit of a Q&A later with that, with that lunch. Sailing's sort of the main thing I'm, uh, I'm about, this isn't, this isn't my day job, so it's kind, of, it's kind of cool to do something different. It's not exactly hard work, you know, it's pretty easy really when you get nice looking girls like this. <laughs> We have over 150 ladies here today um, to support such a great cause and to bring that sailing and social team together is just so important to the event moving forward. Day five of racing dawned to a beautiful Melbourne day. However, light winds persisted across Port Phillip Bay, making for slow going for all competitors. Fortunately, a late afternoon sea breeze finally arrived, allowing all Olympic classes to complete additional races. In the Finn class, James Patterson placed third, reducing his overall lead to Warwick Hill, who won the day's race. This leaves the two to battle it out on finals day, with Timothy Castles and Henry Bagnall also in contention. In the 49ers, the Australian team of Outridge and Jensen won their race, providing them with a strong overall lead. Also extending their lead was Singaporean Leonard Ong in the RSX windsurfers. 
a third over the line saw Australian Tim Gourlay moving up the leaderboard to second. In the women's RSX, Jessica Crisp of Australia continued her near-perfect record. In equal second overall, the Norwegian Yannicka Solström and Angelica Scarlatu of Greece will battle it out for the silver medal tomorrow. Another win in the 470s for the Australian team of Page and Belcher means they'll be nearly impossible to beat on the final day of Sale Melbourne. In the women's 470 class, two straight wins on day five moved Australian Stacey Ome and Chelsea Hall within striking distance of the New Zealand team, Alla and Prowey, with only four points separating the teams. Also separated by four points moving into the final day are American Clayton Johnson and Canadian Michael Lee in the highly competitive laser class. With no single sailor dominating the fleet of 43 entries, all medals are up for grabs on the final day. The women's laser radial will also provide an intense battle, with American Paige Rayley leading Marit Baumeister of the Netherlands by only one point. For more results, including Paralympic and invited classes, log on to sailmelbourne.com.au. Great racing in store, with tomorrow's medal races being worth double points.